So let's take a look at the pad view area. So when you fully train the drum, all of the pads that you've trained will be a lighter gray. Uh, and that means that they are active, they will respond to when you hit the drum and you can drag samples to them and activate the samples. So if you click a pad, uh, the sampler area on the right will be contextual to which plant pad you have selected. So if I click on the center, I can see I have a sampler here. And as well as the pad effects are contextual to which pad you have selected. And so if, let's say you don't want all 10 zones active for a given set. If you right click on a pad, you'll see that there are options to either deactivate or assign it to another zone. So let's say I want to turn a 10 zone drum into a two zone drum. What I can do is go through and assign the pads I don't want to have sounds assigned to. Um, assign it to a pad that I do want active. So what I'm going to do is assign all of these zones to the center and I'll assign all of these uh, rim shot edge, rim shot center zones to the rim tip. So now if I drag a sample to the center and to the rim tip, I get those two zones. If I have uh, dropped a sample onto one of the other zones, you won't hear it because um, it's assigned to. So if I activate this pad now, you'll hear that I have those three zones. So it's really easy to go back and forth, activate pads, assign them to other zones, um, reduce the complexity or you know go full force and use all 10 zones. And these settings are saved to the kit. So if I go to another kit over here, you'll see that um, we're at, we have a fresh um, template here and uh, all the zones are active. And if I go back, you'll see that it goes back to the way I had it. So for now, let's start with uh, only four zones. So I'm gonna assign all the zones I don't want to the center edge, uh, rim shoulder and rim tip. And uh, I'll usually assign the pads um, to different pads based on how close the gesture is to another gesture. So for instance, a cross stick, if I wanna get rid of the cross stick, I'll assign it to the rim shoulder because that's kind of like the closest action to that. Um, stick shot, I'll just assign it to the center or sometimes I'll assign it to the edge depending on what sound I want. Um, so there's kind of a, you can use your own logic, but that's, um, that's kind of intuitive to me. So now we have four zones and what we can do now is head over to the library area and navigate our sample folder. You can do this either with the arrow pad on your keyboard or uh, just directly click. And uh, when you select a sample, you'll, you can audition it, it'll play back. And again, the volume for that uh, sample playback is here in the app settings. So let's drag a few samples onto our pads. I'll grab a kick sound, and drop it in the center. And you'll see that when I drop the sample onto the pad, over here on the right, we get a sampler that gets created automatically. And let's drag a snare onto the edge. Let's find some hi-hats. So I'll put that on the rim shoulder and this on the rim tip. So now we have four samples. So when I dragged a sample onto a pad, it automatically created a sampler for me. So you'll notice if I take another sample and drag it onto the same pad, it'll add that sample to the list uh, in the sampler. So now it'll be stacked. So if I play the rim tip, we're getting those two, uh, here, I'll, I'll drop a different sounding one. So now we have three samples on the rim tip. I'll drop an even more different sample so it's more obvious. So when you drag a sample to, directly to a pad, it'll add it to whichever sampler is first in the list on that pad. So let's say you wanted to add um, another sampler and add a sample specifically to this second sampler. Um, you, won't, you don't wanna drop it on the pad You'll notice that if I drag this sample, this area on the sampler lights up as well, and you can drag it directly to there. So now I have two samplers on this one pad, 
one has these four samples and then another has this one snare sample. And that's useful because you can do a lot of interesting things with different parameters for each sampler and treat kind of different groups of different samples um, differently and uh, stack effects in really nice and effective ways. So let's say I wanted to, okay, so that snare is just stacked on top of everything else. Now I can pitch this snare down. Uh, those other samples on the other sampler are left the same. Or I can uh, dial back the volume on this group of samples. 